answers the number one question asked by almost every couple that comes in for marital counseling. You ready? It is not, how can we communicate better? Or what can I really do to love my spouse more? Number one question, bar none. And it's you and me, babe, whatever comes. Knowing bigger hands are holding us. And our greatest days are ahead of us. Growing in love, Growing in love. learning to be a better us. Hi there, welcome to A Better Us, and welcome to our home. We have a lot of great experts on A Better Us, and one of them is clinical psychologist, Dr. Mike Roncesvalli. We call his segments On the Beach with Dr. Mike. And he says that after 30,000 hours of counseling couples, there is one question that he gets asked the most. Let's just say it's a spicy question. <laughs> and coming up, he's gonna tell us what that question is and how he answers it. Also, relationship experts doctors Les and Leslie Parrott are here to give us some insights on achieving spiritual intimacy in marriage. And as usual, our kitchen couples have a lot to say on these topics. We have CFL Football Hall of Famer Mike Pinball Clemens and his wife Diane. And recording artist, author and speakers Dan and Danielle McCauley. It's going to be a spicy show, so stay with us. Okay, I'm gonna give you a snapshot into my life as a psychologist, you ready? Here's the number one question asked by almost every couple that comes in for marital counseling, you ready? It is not, how can we communicate better or what can I really do to love my spouse more? Number one question, bar none, how do we spice up our sex life? <laughs> that is it, man, everybody wants to know how you can spice up this marriage. So I'm gonna give you my top 10 list after 25,000 hours working with couples, here's the top 10 list of things that you can do to spice up your marriage. You ready? Number 10, send some flirty text. I mean, come on, that's fun. Now they don't have to be crude or gross, but just a little note that lets your spouse know that, hey, I, baby, I think you are sexy. Or, honey, look, you're the man. That kind of text feels really good to get and it'll spice things up a little bit. Number nine, say yes. Say yes. If your spouse ever comes to you and has an idea of something they think, you know, maybe they want to try, just don't hesitate. Let your first response be yes, not no. Number eight, shower your spouse with compliments. You know what he likes to hear. You know what makes her blood boil. Say it. Don't be afraid to really affirm them and know that the emotional connection you create with them, man, that will heat your marriage up. Number seven, don't forget the small stuff. What's your spouse's favorite treat? What do they love and really, really enjoy? Do it for them. Maybe your spouse likes sleeping in on Saturday morning. Man, you make sure that you keep those kids quiet and you let her sleep in as long as she wants to. That might be the sexiest thing you do all day long. Number six, touch often. Small touches throughout the day really create that physical connection. So when you walk up to your spouse to ask a question, put your hand on the shoulder. Maybe rub the back a little bit. Grab, grab his hand. Look at him in the eyes while you're talking. Now don't, don't freak out. It doesn't have to be sexual. I'm not saying there has to be a lot of sexual play all day long, but good, healthy, physical connection helps. Now having said that, I've established, I've already said, it doesn't have to be sexual, right? You heard me say that, I verbalized it. But I'm gonna say this, sexual touch during the day doesn't hurt either, right? A little pop on the tush every now and then, let your spouse know, hey, I'm into you. I like you, I love you, you're sexy. Number five, take up a hobby together. Now I know that might sound weird when we're talking about having, having a spicy marriage, but sometimes taking up a new hobby together can really fuel a renewed interest in intimacy simply because 
you're breaking the, the daily routine and you're allowing yourself to have just these different kinds of experiences together. And when we do that, it, it forges new experiences that create a new connection that can help with sexuality. Number four, this is really tough for people, but you gotta speak up, speak up. When you start to talk about what feels good sexually, how you want someone to, to touch you, they have all kinds of information that can be a guide for them when they're trying to be sexual with you. So you, you got to get over in your marriage this hesitancy to allow yourself to be open about what feels good and what doesn't feel good. It's just a really basic principle in your marriage to let yourself communicate, especially about important things like sex. Number three, put sex on your calendar. Look, I'm all about spontaneity, has to be a part of your marriage, but it does not hurt to schedule sex in. It's something that really, if you do it right, can, can give you something to look forward to every week. Now I know, you know, I share my calendar at work with like 17 other people, so <laughs> I'm not putting it on that calendar, but there's gotta be ways that you guys as a couple can work together to say, okay, doesn't matter what happens this week, we can get super stressed, really busy, whatever. This time, this is for us, and this is when we're gonna be intimate. Number two, talk about the old days. Talk about the old days. Make it a point to reminisce about the most romantic moments and experiences you've had as a couple. And remembering those times when your marriage was spicy and when, when things were like really popping and, and happening, that just might help you recapture those spicy feelings today. So have fun with that one, guys. And then the number one thing that you can do to spice up your marriage, drum roll please, pray together. I know that might not sound sexy, but man, when you pray with your spouse, it is one of the most emotionally, spiritually intimate things that you can do with one another. And letting your spouse see you in that vulnerable state before God really does create a special kind of bond that is hard to quantify and it's hard to understand. Okay, we're here with our kitchen couples. Yes. We've got Mike and Diane. We've got Dan and Danielle. And uh, boy, this... Uh, it was getting a little hot in here to listen to Dr. Mike. A little spicy in the I, I kitchen. Don't, yeah. I don't know. Uh, you, you know what? You, you see the cupboard up here just to the left of the microwave? That's our spice cupboard. So uh, I, I was kind of looking there's, at that cupboard. There's some smoke and coming out of that cupboard, think, uh, I think. Maybe there's some, some things I can use in there. But, yeah. Uh, but Dr. Mike had his top 10 mm -hmm. list. And it's interesting that after, he said, 25,000 hours, mm -hmm. uh, counseling hours yeah. with, with couples, uh, that he got this top 10 list because people, the big question was, how can I spice up my marriage? And so, uh, and, and, and you good, know what? I know, I know as we were all watching that segment together, I heard a lot of giggling coming from each of your, your little boxes there. So what's going on? you guys <laughs> we had to edit each other we were like okay no I was like no you can't you say that you can't say that, that. on <laughs> television you know what actually struck me uh, from his top 10 list was the large percentage of them had nothing to do with the bedroom Hmm. That they that they didn't have anything to do with specific things in the bedroom or anything, but they all kind of like led up to the Leads bedroom. To it. And yeah. it's interesting how they say you know that sex starts in the kitchen or whatever that idea, the which is cupboard. an option. Yeah. Uh, the spice cupboard. There you go. So yeah. when we're all in our kitchens. I just realized. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I was gonna say um, it reminded me. Uh, uh, this a meme I've seen, and it's like the the first frame is like a close up of a of a, a girl's mouth whispering in a guy's ear, and she's saying, oh, "Do that thing I like." And then, then the next frame is, "I'll take a large pizza with cheese." <laughs> and it's like he's he's ordering her a pizza. Or actually, I've seen it another way too, where the next thing he's doing is he's taking the kids and leaving the house. Do that thing I like. Yeah, that's very like. sexy. Yeah, it's very sexy. <laughs> you know what actually struck me was that. He said that for couples, this is like the number one thing that they want to improve in their marriage. And yet 
there's this disconnect. I feel like a lot of couples don't really feel like they need to put effort into it. And like he, you said, even outside of that, that you're not actually um, seeking ways and counsel and trying to do things that would improve that area of your life. And so maybe that, um, you know, couples watching just need to hear that it takes effort. It's not just going to magically happen and be, yeah. you know, have fireworks without a little bit of effort. And so, yeah, those are my thoughts. I think when we think of it, it, it takes so little effort when you're younger, right? Mm -hmm. That, that you, 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 in your mind, you say, this shouldn't be hard. Uh, but I, I, the, the top 10 list, as he went down, I say, that's, that's just practical, prudent ideas. Right. And, uh, right. so, so, you know, putting those things into practice on a consistent basis, uh, I, I think is a, a tremendous way uh, to reignite things, if you will. Yeah, and, and what I love is the fact that he said, talk about the old days. Yeah. Because when you talk really about nice. the old days and you, you know, when you were young and, yeah. you know, everything was really spicy, <laughs> uh, it, it brings those, you know, emotions back. And, and I love that. Mm. And the other thing uh, that I love, he said, was to say yes. Mm. <laughs> say yes when you want to try something new or you want just Simply say yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love, like what you said, Dan, a lot of the list was practical stuff mm -hmm. that leads up to uh, closing that door and locking it and leaving the kids on the other side of the door for a little while. <laughs> you know, it's, it's all about the, even the, the flirty text, the first thing on his list, sending a flirty text. Mm -hmm. I love that. When, when this know. guy sends me a flirty text, I'm just like, Right? Oh, right there. <laughs> there's some good emojis you can slip in there as well that, that just kind of say, hey, baby. <laughs> and you know what? And you can come up with your own. Everyone get creative on how That's you right. can, can get a little flirty with your spouse. Yeah. I love the, I think when we do marriage seminars, one of a woman's top three needs is soft, non-sexual affection. Mm -hmm. So that, that, you know. That touch. That, that touch. Yeah, yeah coming that up to her in touch. the kitchen and just kind of wrapping your arms around her or just coming up behind her and wrapping your arms around her and just letting her know that, that you're there and you, you like touching her. And, and I mean, that is, that goes a long way in preparing yeah. her for later on when you are alone and just lots of little things like that go along. Because ways. especially for a woman, that uh, intimate connection is mm -hmm. more emotional than it is physical yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know yeah. what happens in the bedroom and so so all mm -hmm. these other things that lead up to that right. are just uh, building on uh, on that connection right. emotionally absolutely and I love that he ended the list with praying together because mm -hmm. you know that when you are genuinely and sincerely mm -hmm. praying together before the Lord because yeah. he knows you there's no there's no sweet talk in God he sees your heart and okay. when you really humble yourself before God you're pretty vulnerable yeah. and you know what being vulnerable together before God is it, it's a very intimate place mm -hmm. to be and that really yeah. ushers you into that next level of, of just being um, intimate together so I, I like that I just was thinking you know I want to just encourage couples out there if you've lost that love and feeling go back and do all the things that you did when you had like so many of those things on that list are things you used to do and so don't be discouraged like well maybe there's something wrong just go start doing those things and the right feelings will follow Very all right good. i like it good stuff right. okay thanks everyone thanks, uh, we'll be back with more of our kitchen couples yeah. and stay tuned the whole idea of spiritual intimacy right. wasn't falling into place for us so uh, well, we're social scientists. We yes. were in graduate school at the time. We thought, let's do a survey. And we began to survey church-going couples asking two very simple questions. Hey friends, Ron and Ann here. We're so glad you're with us at A Better Us and we pray your marriage is blessed as you take this in. Be sure and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and enjoy this video.
know, when we first got married, somebody gave us a one-year Bible, and we thought, what a cool gift. We're going to read through the oh, Bible yeah. in our first married year. And you know how that works a little from the New Testament, a little bit from the Old Testament. And in a year's time, you've read through the whole yeah. Bible, right? what a shared, amazing thing. I think we got through the first six chapters of Genesis <laughs> before we gave up on this project. We yes. were doing this just before we'd fall asleep, and we discovered we started to have little tiffs about who gets to read first because that person could actually start to doze off while the other person was reading. Was from still the doing yes. the fervent work. Right. Yeah. Not a couple of spiritual giants here. We were both in seminary at the time too. And uh, it, we really discovered that that is not our style. Yeah, and we thought it would draw us closer to God and each other, but it didn't because it didn't fit. And prayer can also be the same way sometimes. Yeah, we weren't jiving on prayer either. And we were sending little messages and just the whole idea of spiritual intimacy right. wasn't falling into place for us. So. Uh, well, we're social scientists. We yes. were in graduate school at the time. We thought, let's do a survey. And we began to survey church-going couples asking two very simple questions. How satisfied are you with your level of spiritual intimacy? And how important is that to you? Now, when it comes to importance, people, what do you think they would say? Nine or ten. These oh, are church-going yeah. couples. They we valued really think it like us. Important. On average, what do you think they said? How content, how satisfied with their level of spiritual intimacy? Well, three or four. Huge gap between what they want and what they have when it comes to spiritual intimacy. And our response personally was like, oh, at least we're not alone, yeah, right? This is somewhat normal, but it's not what we aspire to. Right. So what can we do about yeah. that? Yeah. And that's where we started seeking some mentoring from other couples. What are you guys doing that really does draw your spirits together? And we discovered something really important. There's three essential things. No, we didn't find three <laughs> essential things. That's what we were hoping for. Right. Here's what we discovered. Everybody has their own pathway right. in learning to walk together with God in a way that's meaningful. Yes. So if you're struggling with spiritual intimacy in your own relationship, that's all right. Give it some time as you discover the sacred pathway for the two of you. Well, we are back in the kitchen with our kitchen couples. Mm -hmm. We have Dan and Danielle McCauley, Mike and Diane Clemens. Even though they're not actually in their kitchen right now, but that, that's, that's, that's okay. okay. They're we, at Mike's office. Their house is under renovation. <laughs> but but it still counts. It, it does. still counts. It does. You come with us, and we're in our kitchen. So you're still a kitchen couple. But you know what, you guys? I love how transparent. Les and Leslie are about the whole struggle with the, the, the spiritual connection, spiritual mm -hmm. intimacy, because every marriage goes through these stages where you're just so busy and you're just you're running ragged in so many different directions. And really to connect on a spiritual level on a regular basis can be difficult and it takes work. So as somebody who prioritizes that, I want to thank them for being mm -hmm. so transparent that, you know, yeah. what sometimes you know, it's hard to do. You know, our goal as couples is to have oneness and oneness in, in every area of life, mm -hmm. you know, emotional and physical, but the spiritual oneness as well yeah. is one that's often neglected, mm -hmm. but it, it's so vital. Um, and first and foremost, I guess we, we need to say before you can have spiritual oneness as a couple, yeah. each individually, you need mm. to have that connection with God That's on your right. own personal level. Mm -hmm. And, uh, be, you know, we say I do at the altar, you know, when we're, we get married. But do we also need to have that moment in our life where we say I do to God mm -hmm. and make that commitment to him in our hearts? And maybe as we wrap the program in, in a little bit, um, we'll yeah. talk more about that. Mm -hmm. But we, we want to just throw it out there to see what uh, some of you guys are thinking about yeah. this spiritual intimacy idea. Yeah, I, I appreciate um, kind of where they're coming from. I think on one level, there is there are prescribed pathways to intimacy with God and to building that relationship with God. There's reading his word, his faith comes from hearing the word. There's praying, which is a two-way conversation, both us to God and God speaking to us. And there's spending time together gathering with the saints. I think all three of those are important uh, spiritual disciplines that we do. So when you say, when you say gathering with the saints, you mean going to church? church. Going I to mean church. going to church. Going to church, okay. Yes. Okay. So. So there, there, there are prescribed pathways which we, we gain spiritual uh, intimacy, uh, but within that, within so I, I only say that to say it's not a it's not a free for all. Sometimes people say, "Oh, I'm just being spiritual in my own mm. way." No, there are biblical. Um, 
we have we have diverse approaches yes but there are biblical yeah. approaches so but but within that context of the biblical approach i like i rem, i was thinking of this toy that i've seen around and i think i had one around when i was a kid you've probably seen it it's like a 3d like hexagon shape it's half red and half blue can you yeah. picture it and mm -hmm. there's different different shaped holes in it with the yellow the yellow, the yellow shapes the yellow that you shapes. had to put in it was a square there was a star there was a right so within the biblical confines we all have have different ways that we like to approach so prayer so, I, I like to pace I like to walk I went on a, a long walk this morning praying uh, uh, some people like to kneel or like to uh, have their coffee when they pray or uh, you know so you see where I'm going with that there's mm -hmm. we have I think and I think that's what they're getting at too we all have our different so it's not biblical it's not a spiritual free-for-all they're biblical precedents but within that we have our own different approaches and I think that's uh, that's okay. I think that's yes. part of what makes us the body of Christ is that different things are, uh, we're wired uh, slightly different. And that's okay. That's actually where I was, you know, going in my head is just telling people that's okay. Um, because I know for when we were first married, we've been there less and less. We have, um, you know, thought in my mind, what I pictured as our, our spiritual time together is completely different from what the reality is like this guy here he does say he likes to walk and pray he does that early he also likes to get up super early to have his alone time with God including yeah he wants to be isolated including for me he wants time to himself whereas I would picture you know us being together and and we do have that those moments um not quite as regularly or even, or with, even reading reading the word you you're a Bible study girl. You yes. like to have the Bible study like that walks having, you through it. Yes, and you're me. Just I just like to Bible. read straight scripture. Yeah, like so. The picture, like he's Both saying, good. the picture is different for us. We make sure to make a priority to pray together. That is, I think, right. definitely a non-negotiable. But the way we go about doing our spiritual lives mm -hmm. um, do look different. Uh, men, women, different personalities. Just wherever you're at, it's okay. Right. Yeah, it, that that reminds me of us because uh, we're di we're different in that way. I, I like to do my reading and my studying at night, okay. and we're in. Mike is an early guy. He likes to get up in the morning, and and we always try to find that compromise. He's like, well, what time do you want to get up? Then we can pray together. And I'm like, well, what time do you want to go to bed so we can? Pray <laughs> so sometimes it's, it's, you have to have that compromise during the day uh, that you can be together because it's it's great that we. Both have our time with God, but as a couple, it's crucial that we do also have that time together with God as a couple. So I think, you know, it's just that compromise you have to figure out and uh, just find that time where you can do that together. Very Absolutely. simply get it in or life will knock you out. Yeah, mm. yeah that's good. That's good. I was going to say, and find a good devotional book, maybe, as a couple that you can go through together. I know we've had Gary Thomas several times on this program, and he's written a, a devotional book for couples called Devotions for a Cherished Marriage, or no, Devotions for a Sacred Marriage. Mm -hmm. And um, in it, he really finds ways to draw a couple together as mm -hmm. they point their hearts to God. So you have some kind of resources that you, you can enjoy together as well. Mike, what else were you going to say? I, I was uh, really uh, just encouraging um, couples uh, to be active about this and to be intentional, to intend to do this because it can it can just slip by and, and look before you know it, not weeks, not months, but years go by, yeah. right? And, and, and so we have to be intentional about this process. Good. Okay, good challenges yeah. for all of us yeah. and uh, be intentional and make the effort. It is very yes, worth is. that effort mm -hmm. and it's probably the most strengthening thing we can do in our marriage is have Absolutely. that spiritual oneness. Absolutely. Well, stay with us. Yeah. Uh, more A Better Us to come.
Hi, we hope you're enjoying the show. You know, our vision at A Better Rest is to see every marriage become a loving union that creates a safe family haven, building a legacy of hope for future generations. Yeah. That's why we feel it's so important to invest in marriage relationships through producing a new episode of A Better Us every week. Absolutely. If you feel as we do that marriages are worth investing in, then please consider joining us as a member of A Better Us with a monthly donation of $25. You'll be making a big difference in lives and families. And we'll send you two of our special mugs, the mugs that you see our kitchen couples using each program. Absolutely. And be sure to send us your mugshot selfie yeah. and we'll post it on our Facebook page and on our website. Simply visit abetterus.tv and click donate to set up your automatic monthly giving. God bless you and thank you so much for making this program possible and helping us strengthen marriages. So we can all become a better us. My favorite kind of date night would uh, to be go, go for a bike ride and then go grab something to eat. That'd be a fun day. Well, no, mine would be to go have dinner and then get dessert. <laughs> Skip the bike ride. Are we talking about our date night idea oh, yeah. or his date night idea? Because if, I mean, that, that, that sounded very nice. Lowe's for yeah. him, it's Lowe's. We'll like turn to each other, we'll end up at Lowe's and we're like, oh, this is our Friday date night. He's a great cook. So I'm liking the nice dinner at home and we'll watch some favorite program or we'll rent a movie. Just getting out, doing something fun outside. That's my thing, yeah. <laughs> going out, eating sushi, and spending time with each other. That's mainly our main concern. It doesn't matter where it is. It could be at home. It could be anywhere. We could sit in the car just talking. As long as we, eat, we are with each other, it's just like perfect for us. Thanks for being with us today as we looked at some great marriage topics. Mm -hmm. I especially like Dr. Mike's top 10 list yeah. for spicing up our marriage mm -hmm. based on his many, many hours of counseling couples. If you missed it, just visit our website at abetterus.tv and look for season five, episode 11. In fact, all of our programs are available mm -hmm. there. You know, I really liked how Dr. Mike suggested that we remember the early days. Yeah. Do what you used to do, send those flirty texts. So many simple, great ideas that when added to the humdrum routine of everyday life can really add some spice. Yeah. But you know a good spice that wasn't on his list? No, what? Time. Yeah, it's spelled differently, but spending quality time together is always a great idea, right? I see how you did that. Yeah. And Dr. Mike ended his list with praying together, which really takes your intimacy to a different level, that of spiritual intimacy. Which is what Drs. Les and Leslie Parrott were encouraging us to have. I know it may seem strange to think of spiritual intimacy being as important as physical intimacy, but as we said in the kitchen, being vulnerable together before God, completely open with nothing hidden, that lays the groundwork for a deeper level of oneness. If you think back on your life together, those times that you felt the closest to each other, mm -hmm. they were probably when you were most vulnerable with each other too. Mm -hmm, that's so true. You're sharing things with your spouse that you don't share with any other person. It's a safe place. And when God is in the middle of it, it's a sacred place. But all of it starts with each of you being open to God and letting Him have free reign in your hearts. Mm -hmm. If you have questions about how to get to that place of surrendering your life to Jesus, or if you just like someone to pray with you about what you're currently dealing with, please call our prayer line. You'll be glad you did. Yeah. Thank you again for joining us today. And remember, with God, there is always hope to become a better us. Hey friends, we really hope you're enjoying the marriage conversations here with A Better mm -hmm. Us on our YouTube channel. We have hundreds of more helpful marriage videos designed to give you hope and tools to make your marriage better. And you can see just a few options we think you might like here mm -hmm. and here. Enjoy! Oh, and make sure you subscribe by clicking here so you don't miss out on all the great marriage help we have coming your way soon.